for those of you who have not been able to find out about this in the last 24 hours i found out about it right after it happened because i am very close to where this is i in fact drove across this bridge a week ago i was using the bridge to get into baltimore to go to a pub for st patty's day to hang out with my friends in baltimore because i know a lot of people in baltimore i love baltimore i go to gertrude's for good you know crab cakes i got i you know i love baltimore baltimore is a city that i have a lot of affection for was there a week ago um i've crossed this bridge all the time and it was like three probably 3 a.m maybe 3 30 a.m and i'm scrolling and I get this in my feed, but it wasn't from DMV Newsline. I'm using DMV Newsline because I want to use a local news source from the DMV standing for uh, DC, Maryland, and Virginia area, which it was where I was born and raised. I want to use a local news source because the stuff that was showing up in my feed, it was from the worst actors. And I don't want to say too many names. Okay, that's a lie. I just lied to you, to be honest. I do want to say a lot of names. Um, but we'll get into some of the specific names, or at least I'll point out a few people uh, in a little bit. But I saw people talking about it that I thought, man, I really hope these guys don't linger on this too much, because if they do linger on it, it's only going to be a matter of time before they start doing wild speculation. And I'm going to see theories about Israel, Ukraine, and so-and-so, and Maryland, and Westmore, and Larry Hogan, and now they all are collaborating to blow up the bridge. And I was and I was looking at these theorists and saying, gosh, I hope they just drop it because they're going to look at it. They're going to be like, oh, just a tragedy that's impossible to politicize. Guess I'll move on. These bodies are not useful to me. Sadly, that is not what happened. We're going to get into that in a moment. But what I saw was this video, which is of a uh, a shipping container that is over 985 feet long, and I believe 155 feet, 165 feet wide, according to their website, that slammed in to the Francis Scott Key Bridge, named after the author of our nation's uh, national anthem that leads into uh, Baltimore. Uh, this bridge, after this happened, according to Wes Moore and the Maryland government, he is the governor of Maryland, uh, they're gonna have to reroute over 34,000 people and tons and tons and tons of people use this bridge every year. So this is an important bridge. Um, and to give you an idea of how much damage, not only, of course, there are people missing, we're going to get into that in a moment, but the type of financial damage this can, this can do, the rerouting of 34,000 people and the loss of a bridge, which is reconstruction, will reportedly cost over $600 million to a, the city of Baltimore, a city that is very, let's just say, economically um, hard-pressed right now. To put it lightly, I don't want to get too much into the Maryland local politics, but there's a reason why Larry Hogan was always sparring with Baltimore, and it was all it was usually around budgetary issues. Sometimes it was over issues like policing, but it, a lot of times it was budgetary issues. And so them trying to rebuild this was already terrifying, and immediately the implications hit me. But then immediately after that, I don't know why this hit me uh, slightly after. I was like, oh my god, that bridge is that oh, it's so expensive. And I realized that you could see there's lights on the bridge. There's lights on the bridge. And if you look at the full footage, and this isn't the full footage, but you can see cars crossing it. But at this last moment before it collapses, and you can see the ship ram into one of the support beams, the bridge comes down. There appears to be maybe one or two cars left, but there were cars passing shortly before it passed, so there's a good reason to believe that there were cars on there. We know that there were people on the bridge when it collapsed. Uh, construction workers who were working on the bridge uh, were on the bridge when it collapsed, and their uh, families are saying that they're still missing, that there's still at least six people missing. Two were saved out of the water. Immediately, a mass casualty event was declared by authorities responding on the scene, and six people are still missing the majority of whom are construction workers i believe there is a picture here of one of the construction workers who was reassigned who was previously working on the francis scott key bridge doing repairs um uh, jesus campos who was rearranged somewhere else he said via translators that he used to be on the bridge team but was recently shifted to a different shift i could have been there like my co-workers so right now 
there's still a search for the missing people. Uh, obviously, uh, there is a huge fear of what condition they are in. A lot of people are bracing themselves for the worst news. Uh, this is a tragedy, not only for the city of Baltimore. Uh, this is a tragedy for Maryland. This is a tragedy for uh, the, those families affected, those families of construction workers, those families of the people who risk their lives to try to get people off. Though it's, it's a tragedy for, I mean, it's tragedy, honestly, for the entire state of Maryland. It's not just a tragedy for Baltimore, it's a tragedy for the entire state of Maryland. Uh, because a lot of these construction workers don't just work live in Baltimore. A lot of them would presumably live outside of areas in Baltimore. And of course, people come into Baltimore that don't just live there. I love Baltimore. Uh, of course, it's going to hit Baltimore the hardest, but this really is a huge tragedy for our state. And so I wanted to go through a few more pieces of information before we got into the response, which did not make me happy. Um, again, like I said, over 34,000 daily drivers are going to be rerouted. There is going to be a probe to examine why the ship rammed. Now, I don't want to go through micro analyzing the footage. I just don't think it's useful. I can just tell you what the footage shows. You can see as the footage is coming up, I mean, as the ship is coming up to the bridge, the lights on it turn off. And so there's a lot of speculation that there was a power outage, at least that's the leading theory right now, on the transport ship, and then it rammed, and then it rammed the bridge after they had lost control and they were unable to steer it, hit one of the support beams and brought it down. But I'm sure there is going to be a probe into that. And yes, six people are still missing. That's from the Baltimore Sun. Here is an up-close shot of the uh, boat which is called the Dolly, by the way. It's an, a completely Indian crew, as far as I'm aware, international transport ship uh, that was traveling through the Baltimore area. Now, the fact that it's an Indian crew, that isn't like a random fact I'm bringing up. Um, I'm bringing that up because that will become useful later. I'm not making any political statement about them being an Indian crew. It's just that the identity of the crew became politicized very quickly, and we're gonna comment on that in a moment. Yeah, but there it is. And I mean, the bridge really just crumpled. The bridge just crumpled. Once the support beam was knocked out, these these different uh, support beams, I saw some people confused by it. I think I saw one, I think it was like an explosive, somebody who I guess considered themselves an explosive expert. I don't know if I brought the video up. Let me see if it's in my, uh, uh, in my discord if i can't find it then we'll just move on but an explosive expert saying hey look at this and look at that and look at this hmm that's really suspicious isn't it well what, what are those symbols there what are those symbols there i bet somebody planted explosives bridges don't just collapse that easily it sounds it's very similar to the you know jet fuel can't melt still beams etc etc so before outside of again i'm not an explosive expert i'm not an infrastructure expert i'm not an engineering expert i can't get into it but i just want to put out there that this is a 985 mile ship 985 mile ship there's a hundred uh, my whoa never mind mile ship never mind it's very very big ship no foot ship no foot long ship 985 feet long 150 feet wide when these ships were being popularized these types of container ships it was after the bridge was designed this the francis scott key bridge was getting constructed in I believe like the early 70s. It was made way before I was born. And when it was being finishing in construction, especially when it's being designed, these types of container ships were not popular in the Baltimore. They were not moving around the Baltimore area. The container ships and international shipping have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so this this, I mean, not any, there's not really many bridges that could sustain, if any, this type of blow from a container ship, but especially a bridge like this that was made again in the 1970s, designed in the 1960s, as far as I'm aware. And you also gotta know that, and we're gonna get to some of the infrastructure issues too, and this is one of the main things that I know I have complaints about, and I've heard other people have complaints about, because I've talked to some of my engineering friends, um, and it has to do with fenders. Uh, this is something that I'm very worried about, is the fact that why weren't there fenders on the Francis Scott Key Bridge? Uh, I have some pictures here. Uh, let's see, where did I put them? Ah, yes, here they are. Here is the Francis Scott Key Bridge, one of its supporting structures. Uh, as you can see here, the one behind it doesn't even have that tiny thing around. It's just, com it's just completely... I don't want to say barren, but it's, you know, the, the load-bearing structure is all that is there. 
that's there's no fenders there's nothing around it that could help to deflect or slow down any ship that was to ram it and uh, while that might not I, I understand it's not an all bridges around the world it really stuck out to me when I saw this picture floating around, which shows that the electricity lines next to the Francis Scott Key Bridge has those fenders, but the bridge itself doesn't. Now, again, I'm not saying that if we added these fenders, that magically the, you know, the boat wouldn't have destroyed the bridge and it wouldn't have been a disaster, but I am saying that it could have helped. I am saying that, and I'm not just saying that. I know that uh, engineers from the uh, University of Johns Hopkins have said that. I know other engineers with a lot more credibility than I have have said that. And of course, I'm citing John Hopkins, given, you know, Maryland's story, after all. Um, point is, there is a real... When this bridge is reconstructed, and we're going to talk about the reconstruction in a second, it's going to cost like $600 million. Um, we've already announced... There's already been announced that construction will probably begin in June, and construction will probably end in... Uh, 2026 what month in 2026 i know but that's at least the estimate that's being floated around as the federal government uh, goes into action um one second i think we actually have a statement from joe biden that we can listen to here where he says that he wants to use the full weight the full weight of the federal government to try to help repair the bridge and the quality the bridge is also critical to for travel not just for baltimore but for the northeast corridor over 30,000 vehicles cross the francis scott key bridge on a daily basis it's virtually well it's one of the most important elements for the economy in the northeast yep. and the quality of life my transportation secretary is there now as I told Governor Moore, I've directed my team to move heaven and earth to reopen the port and rebuild the bridge as soon as humanly possible. And we're going to work hand in hand with the support of Maryland to support Maryland and whatever they ask for. And we're going to work with our partners in Congress to make sure the state gets the support it needs. It's my intention that federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. Wow. And I expect the, the Congress to support my effort. This is going to take some time. The people of Baltimore can count on us, though, to stick with them at every step of the way until the port is reopened and the bridge is rebuilt. Until the bridge is rebuilt. It was a quick response from Biden. He announced this within 24 hours that he intends to use the full force of the federal government and that they're going to cover the entire cost. And this is one of the main concerns I immediately had because I was like, what is Baltimore going to do to cover this type of expense? They just don't have the money for it. And so Joe Biden is doing, I, of course, as the probe continues and we see how construction goes, then we can judge it after the fact to see, you know, if he goes through with the promise, if it's properly managed, stuff like that. If Pete Buttigieg, uh, as transportation secretary, properly manages the reconstruction and we need to keep a close eye on that. Um, I don't care if you're in the same party as them. Um, this is Maryland. This is my home. This is be true about anybody's home. You need to make sure the government's being held accountable here. But this is the start of a good response for the Biden administration. But when we repair this bridge, we need to understand that when this bridge was built, when this Francis Scott Key Bridge was built, it was built in a time where we didn't expect these types of ships to be coming in to Baltimore. The Baltimore a Harbor has expanded and expanded and expanded in its shipping capacity and is now a massive part of the economy of Maryland, of Baltimore, and of the Northeast. Not only Maryland and Baltimore, but the, the goods and the products and the items that ship through this area affect the entire country. And so not only is the repairing of the bridge important for the local Maryland state and economy, but also the, the economic contribution to the Northeast is important for the entire country. So it's good that Biden's doing this response, but when that construction is good is done, it should have fenders. It should have fenders. They need to reconstruct this with the idea that something like this could happen again. Um, outside of that, I wanted to quickly oh. show you guys uh, how the we got some stuff from DMV that I thought was very interesting. That means DMV Newsline, which is video of uh, of different broadcasts between police dispatches as they respond to the uh, boat ramming. Because I want to say again, the reason why we're not talking about dozens and dozens and dozens of people dead right now, probably, uh, who knows how many dead, uh, is because they were pre-alerted. Is because there was good communication. They saw that the boat was getting dangerously close. It looked like it was a power outage. And within a minute to a minute and 30 seconds, a minute to 90 seconds, they were able to get as many people off of the bridge as they could and save a lot of lives. 
Here's the news. Here's the police broadcast. Before we get back, get into the area that is really frustrating me now. I need one of you guys on the south side, one of you guys on the north side, hold all traffic on the key bridge. Uh, there's a ship approaching that just lost their steering. So until you get that under control, we got to stop all traffic. Yeah, we're all on the route to the south side. This is to start. Uh, I'm holding traffic now. I was dragging, but we stopped prior to the bridge. So I'll have all out of the traffic stopped. But once you get here, I'll go grab the uh, workers on the key bridge and then stop the outer loop. 213 dispatch, the whole bridge just fell down. Start, start, whoever, everybody. The whole bridge just collapsed. Simple dispatch is direct. That's correct. There's time. Do we know all traffic was stopped? I can't get to the other side, sir. The bridge is down. I mean, the police responded as quickly as you can humanly imagine that they could have. The first responded, responders responded as quickly as you could imagine as the tragedy was unfolding. And due to that quick decision making and shutting down the inflow into the bridge as those uh, cars on the bridge raced to get off of it, they were able to save lives. And so, thank to the quick thinking of these first responders, uh, we have saved a lot of lives. Now, of course, it's still a tragedy, still a huge hit to the to Maryland economy, Baltimore economy, to the state. Huge, lo uh, huge loss for the families that are going to be affected uh, as we learn more about the missing people. Of course, I hope for the best, but we are bracing for the worst. Now that you have an idea of what's happened, um, I want to get into the stuff that's frustrated me. That's frustrated me. Uh, immensely I man I don't I don't know where to start here so I'm just gonna start wherever and we're gonna move from there um, as this was going on and as I was talking about earlier tons and tons and tons of theories and predictions and conspiracies and allegations all unsourced all without evidence, just started wildly going around all across Twitter. And not just Twitter, but Twitter was the one where I saw it was the worst. Oh, I'm sorry, X, to give the platform its proper respect. And some of it I caught almost immediately, like this, for example. Alternate angle on Francis Scott Key Bridge shows a large explosion, eyes. This isn't the Francis Scott Key Bridge. If you guys have been following the war in Ukraine long enough, that's the Kerch Bridge. That's the Kerch Bridge. This is from when the Ukrainians targeted the Kerch Bridge in the middle of the night for the first time. Of course, I remember that footage. It was an incredible day when that happened. It was, it was history in the making. But the hope is that Americans or whoever is paying attention wouldn't be able to tell. And then they'd be like, wait, a large explosion? That sounds like a bomb. That sounds, that sounds like, well, a, 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 I mean, maybe there's terrorists, maybe there's, maybe there's some foul play involved that I have yet to see. So, but it wasn't just this, and this is the type of stuff I've saw, I've seen with uh, Palestine as well, with the pe people taking pictures of dead Palestinian uh, Syrian kids or people who were hurt during the Syrian civil war, and just saying they were Palestinians for clicks and views, misinterpreting previous historical footage to try to present it as current historical footage at the current tragedy. Incredibly frustrating, but I've seen this before. Then I saw Lord Bebo, who's a well-known misinformation machine on the X platform. Uh, he put out the idea, as since we're staying in the Ukrainosphere right now, that the captain of the ship that hit the bridge in Baltimore is Ukrainian. And then went on to speculate, is he upset with the aid delay or just unlucky? So they're Ukrainian and speculating that, oh, I mean, come on, you just think that they just so happen to be Ukrainian? You just think they just so happen to be Ukrainian on the Singaporean ship? Oh, no, no, no. They, they were upset about the aid. This is an attack on America from Ukraine. Just the problem. This guy they're talking about down here, yeah, he stopped working for this company and, and piloting the ship in 2016. Well, I don't know about working for the company, but he stopped piloting his ship in 2016. 
the person who is piloting the ship as of 2022 is an Indian man. Not that it matters. Not that I think there's some Indian government conspiracy where Modi wanted to target the Francis Scott Key bridge because he thought Francis Scott Key had two fire bars for him to maintain. No, like it's it's an Indian man, just complete nonsense. But I mean, Lord Boba, Bebo, what are you going to expect? But I got to say again, it's just so frustrating to see the worst characters, man. The worst characters in the neighborhood. The worst characters. Travis Cook said, I'm not sure this was such an accident. Looks to me like the ship might have taken on dead aim at the bridge. So I have to ask the question, who might have been responsible? ISIS, Ukraine, or CIA? Hashtag Baltimore Bridge. This is just playing story time with dead people. I, I just want people to know that when people do this type of shit online and it's not just like this, I don't care if you're pro-Ukraine, I don't care if you're pro-Russian, I don't care if you're pro-anything, I don't give a fuck. If you do this type of thing about an atrocity before you know anything, you are playing story time with dead people. You are taking the bodies of the deceased, of those who have been lost in a tragedy, and you're putting them in a puppet show and say, and put, oh yes, they're all, oh, they did it for my ISIS fantasy. Oh no, it was my CIA fantasy. I wonder how I can use these dead bodies to craft a Tom Clancy novel. That's what you're doing. That's what Travis Cook is doing. He never grew out of playing with dolls as a kid, so now he's just decided to do it with real people. I don't think we need to watch this uh, statement from uh, Pete Buttigieg, but this is plus, plus it's unrelated. This is just Pete Buttigieg re responding to a comment asking, like, why did the bridge collapse so easily? Why did the bridge collapse so easily? And he responded, and I guess I should play this before we move on to mis misinformation, saying it was a 985, uh, I almost said mile again, foot bridge, uh, foot ship. We've seen now uh, several bridges. Also, follow this account on Twitter. They do good protest coverage, completely unfiltered. A good Ukrainian American journalist. Collapses happened over the past couple of years. Obviously, this was a catastrophic, a catastrophic event, but that bridge fell very quickly. Uh, how concerned should Americans be about the bridges that they're traversing every single day in this country? Well, this is a, a unique circumstance. Uh, I do not know of a bridge that has been constructed to withstand a direct impact from a vessel of this size. What I will say is anytime anything happens to any bridge, uh, we as a country take that and learn from that. Uh, learning from incidents as diverse as what happened to uh, I-95 in Philadelphia, what happened to I-10 in Los Angeles, uh, or uh, another case that we're learning a lot from here, which is the two 2007 collapse of I-35 West in uh, Minnesota. Let me, let me emphasize that was a very different circumstance with very different causes. And the NTSB, by design, is independently meeting the investigation of what those causes are. No question that we will take all of that information and apply it in our future work. Basically, they're going to do an investigation. You get the idea. Moving on with the misinformation. One last Ukraine thing. And this one, this one kicked me in the ass. This is from Kira Won't Miss, which is a popular Twitter account. I think Kira Won't Miss. Am I correct to say? Well, actually, I'll ask this afterwards. Well, no, I'll, no, wait. Why am I asking this for? I can Google this now. Kira. Uh. Was this one of the guys who did like the boxing? Wasn't this one of the guys who did boxing, like YouTube boxing? Nah, I have no clue. Anyway, back to this. He put out a tweet in response to this saying, the government is busy sending money to fund wars when our infrastructure is shit. Prayers to everyone affected by this tragedy. <laughs> A 985-foot ship rammed in to the bridge. The problem here isn't that our infrastructure is just garbage. The problem here is a 985-foot ship rammed into the bridge. The thing I was talking about fenders earlier, this is like a thing that could have helped. When I listen to experts, they don't say that would have stopped it. They say that might have helped. The same way that a fire extinguisher in a home might help if a floor catches a flame. But the problem is still the floor catching a flame. The problem is still a fire authority. If you are looking at 
who are the first people you blame? Do you blame Al Qaeda? Or at this po point, of course, it's different. We're talking about terror, deliberate terror attack and a, and a crash. Would you blame Al Qaeda or the uh, uh, ship drivers, the people who, you know, ship shut down or the ship manufacturer, whoever didn't maintain the ship, whatever the probe shall show? Or do you blame the construction workers who built the buildings, who built the Twin Towers, but did not make them strong enough to sustain a plane, a 737 ramming into the side of it? Who do you blame there? Now, of course, you could make the comment like, well, maybe we should make skyscrapers or important buildings that are more sturdy. And you could do certain things to make the Twin Towers more sturdy. You could do certain things to make this bridge more sturdy. But even if you asked it, added the fenders, that wouldn't shipproof the bridge. That wouldn't make it so like, well, now the bridge can't go down if you take a gigantic ship and ram it. Imagine you see somebody take their car and they ram it into the front of a 7-Eleven. Is your first conclusion like, man, they should have put some some concrete barriers in front of the door in case of car ramming. And I mean, they maybe that could have helped or maybe the car would have bumped over it and went in anyway. Maybe the car would have run around it. Maybe depending on the car size, they could have gone through. Who knows? All I'm saying is the idea that you could have, that this, the problem here, the central problem here is just we sent too much money overseas and it isn't the ship like here's the thing if we didn't send a dime to ukraine or israel right or you sent maybe to ukraine or not israel who knows what maybe we didn't send anything to anyone no matter how moral or unmoral the cause was that wouldn't have changed the outcome here number one a lot of the aid we're sending over to ukrainians the stuff that was made 67 years ago like during the vietnam war like artillery guns from the Korean War, like this this equipment that we're a lot of it we're sending, isn't stuff you can just magically turn into bridge construction material to like reinforce the bottom of the bridge and reinforce and make the these are weapons that have already been made that my grandfather was using. Whether or not we send this to Ukraine or not does not decide whether this bridge goes down. There we. The key factor here, again, is the ship ramming into the bridge. Why is everyone working so hard in every scenario to blame either foreign aid or the final, like even if we stop sending money to Ukraine, Israel, everyone, everyone, that wouldn't have magically fixed the situation. Would the federal government have stepped up and been the ones to make the reinforce? And again, the reinforcement, we don't even know would have stopped it. There's likely that it wouldn't have. So, I mean, even speculating about it is pointless. Point is, the statement to me reads like this. Man, if only we hadn't sent aid to those other foreign countries, then that ship wouldn't have rammed into our bridge. That's how it reads to me. That's how it reads to me. I don't like this. I feel like this is trying to, again, take this to service a cause that is unrelated. Whatever. Moving on. Here's another disinfo attack that our great state has suffered. This time from Andrew Tate, which has been viewed 15.7 million times. 15.7 million times. Now, context for Twitter views, that, that just means you scrolled past it. Right? That could mean you scroll past it, that could mean you watched it, it could mean any number of things. But 15.7 million people had this in their feed. And 56,000 thought it was smart enough to click like. 8.7 thousand thought it was so smart enough that they wanted to go back and read it again, so they bookmarked it. And look at this. This ship was cyber attacked. Lights go off and it deliberately steers towards the bridge supports. Foreign agents of the USA attack digital infrastructure. Nothing is safe. Black Swan event imminent. This is just, this is bull. This is bull. The Biden administration has said, and American government officials have said, there's no uh, proof yet of intentional attack. There could simply just have been a power outage. That's a possibility too. What what of this scenario? What of the footage he is posting shows a cyber attack? What we see is a bridge is a ship turn off, and then it rams into that after turning off. That's all we see. That's all we know. And when he tweeted this out, it was seven twenty one a.m. This was five hours 
after this happened. Five hours, he was already coming out with Black Swan event. Every, the world is ending. Everything is collapsing. We're all gonna die. The foreigners are attacking. Why? Because this ship rammed into a bridge. And, we, and now it's a, it's a digital hack. Why? I don't know. Look at, look at the ship. Doesn't it look sussy? It's pathetic. This guy's pathetic. Andrew Tate's pathetic. This is pathetic. And again, it's disrespectful to the dead. This is for what? What, what, what was the purpose of this? Who does this inform? Does this make us more aware of like the possibility of cyber attacks? Who, what is this meant for outside of scare people with the idea of a black swan event? Where does that come from? I don't know scare people about the idea of a black swan event for views and money and attention that's what it looks like to me because this has no basis in the planet earth that i'm standing on then there were these attacks oh my god these were a dime a dozen people blaming dei which stands for diversity uh, equity and inclusion which is the idea, or at least this is the big cultural kind of hot button topic of different companies or hirers or, you know, employment facilities uh, hiring people based off the idea of, you know, having diversity, equity and inclusion in their workplace. And the debate being, well, I think that you should just focus on what is best for the, you know, company and who is best for the job, while the other people on the other side of it saying, well, actually, diversity is best for the company because it shows better work outcomes. And there's debate about like the fairness of that. That's the debate, right? I don't even want to touch it. You want to know why? Not because I'm scared to give an opinion on it but because it's unrelated. It's unrelated. DEI did this? This was tweeted at 11.15 a.m. Did he go through, like all, by the, oh, okay, six, seven, eight hours since then, I've gone through all the lists of all the people on the ship, and I've seen their background and work requirements, and saw their training and educational history. I saw, oh, look, this person had a criminal history. He shouldn't have been in there. Oh, this person, he he's known as the ship rammer. He's known as the ship rammer in India. This isn't even an American crew. This is an Indian crew. What, what do you expect from India? Guess what? It's Indians. Of course, yeah, if it's from diversity and inclusion. What? Is, what does it mean? DI where? DI everywhere? Is any time a disaster is going to happen? Any time a disaster is going to happen? It's just going to be DI this, DI that. Somebody crashes a car, DI there. Oh, he found alcohol in his system? No, nah, it was probably the DI in his system, not the alcohol in his system. But we're like five seconds away from somebody shouting, was the bridge vaccinated? This, and this wasn't the only post. Look at this, 10,000 likes. This is Baltimore's, this is not even an attempt to connect this to the, to the ship. This is just the mayor of Baltimore responding to the tragedy in the middle of the night. This is Baltimore's DEI mayor commenting on the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge. It's going to get so, so much worse. Prepare accordingly. And I looked at this and I immediately, like, I saw clan hoods on every letter of this. I saw clan hoods on every letter of this tweet. I was like, God, he must say some crazy stuff in this video clip to, to warrant that type of response from this man. Let's listen. Uh, everyone, this is a unthinkable a tragedy. Uh, we have to uh, first and foremost pray for all of those who are impacted, uh, those families. Uh, pray for our first responders and thank them, uh, all of them working together, uh, city, state, local, to make sure that we... Duh, it's, like, it's the most like basic of we're grieving, we're suffering, we're mobilizing state resources to help those affected. It's... It's what you would expect and what you would need to hear from the mayor of your city, given the circumstances in the middle of the night. That's what, what DEI mayor, what is this even referring to? What could this be referring to? I mean, DEI, it's not like they choose mayors through who's the blackest guy in the room, right? I don't think that's the contest. Oh, who in here is the most diverse? Oh, and that guy has a wheelchair and he's Chinese. He gets the position. Sorry, sir. You were just disabled, but you were Puerto Rican, which is less diverse. Tech like, no, it's that's not what's happening. People vote. It was an open vote that elected Brandon.
it was uh, it was an open vote. I don't know what else to say. So the only way I could interpret this is DEI is like a dog whistle for black. Or maybe the N-word, considering who we're talking about here. I mean, th that's the only way I can interpret this. It just says, this is Baltimore's DI mayor. He wasn't chose through some diversity board. He was chose by an open election. It just sounds like he was too scared to say, Baltimore has a black mayor. Screw Baltimore. That's why it sucks. That's what it sounds like to me. It's going to get worse. Why? Because DI mayor. What does that translate into? It's going to get worse because they have a black mayor. It's just he's just complaining that he's black, but he's too scared to say I don't like him because he's black. Just say it with your chest. This is Elon Musk's platform. You can say you don't like him because he's black and keep your check mark and keep your ads and keep your everything. You can say whatever the hell you want. Apparently on this platform, say it with your chest, you cowardly, sniveling scum fuck. Say it with your chest. Come on. Next, and this wasn't the only one. They were really going after the mayor, Baltimore's actual mayor. And it's the same, like I checked, it's the same 19 seconds. It's the same conciliatory 19 seconds. Look at this response. Looks like the kind of guy who would try to bum a cigarette from you outside the gay station. They just don't like that he's black. Is it the outfit? Is that what they don't like? Because if it's the outfit, I don't buy it's the outfit, by the way. That's a city of Baltimore jacket. If you look, you can see behind the map, uh, behind the mic, it says Brandon Scott, the mayor. And you can see under it, it says mayor. This is, this is something he has to wear in the middle of the night at like 2.30, 3 a.m. He has to get out of his home. He's woken up, told mass casualty event, puts on whatever he can, gets out the door and is there. I don't care if that dude was in overalls, straw hat, Corn cob pipe had a double barrel shotgun over his shoulder. He's there. He's responding. It's what he's supposed to do. It's what he's supposed to do. And I'm not saying this as a Brandon Scott like like lover and huge fan, right? I'm I'm somebody who'd probably almost certainly want somebody more progressive than Brandon Scott. But when it comes to the most basic service of mayor, he's doing that here. You just don't like he's doing it because while he's black. By the way, I'm not the only one just talking about how bad this misinformation wave has been. Mainstream outlets are covering it. It's made enough waves. Our state being covered and in in thrown and just so much misinformation, disinformation, dung is getting covered by major outlets. There's other theories out there I've seen. I saw, you know, of course, there's Israel, ISIS, Ukraine did it, cyber attack, um, what was the other ones? I think they talk about another one. Oh, yeah, the, it intentionally rammed into the bridge. All sorts of different theories. None of them with evidence, all of whom was coming out hours within the attack. And so what I think happened, and you need to keep an eye out for these people, whether it be, you know, the cat turds, the Lord Bebos, uh, the Mario Newfalls, the David Sachs, any of those people, even though I didn't see what those last two said about this, but they have said similar things about other events. If all they do anytime anything happens, right, is try to find a way to fit the puzzle piece of a tragedy into their own cornucopia, into their own preconceived notions, like if maybe that preconceived notion is right, for example, like, hey, I'm noticing a trend between drunk driving and death. So the more evidence I gather, the more the clearer picture I paint for, oh, it looks like drunk driving and death. But if if you're trying to make it so everything is Ukraine's fault, everything is Israel's fault, then you're going to start making this crooked image where you have to rely on misinformation and disinformation to blame them for literally everything because it's an obsession that you've developed over the internet or, or for the broadcasters of much of this, for profit because you want to get on these stories as soon as they come out, as soon as they come out, so you jump on them, and if you get them, not only if you get them as soon as they come out, which is going to boost you as well, as people are Googling, trying to find out, even if you don't have all the information to really responsibly make a statement, but if you also add hyperbolic statements like Black Swan event, oh my God, we're all going to burn down, then more people, even more people will pay attention to you, and so then you make money, and let me tell you something, I got one of those, like, sponsor, I'm not going to say sponsorship deals, but one of those ad deals, see what type of money I would make off Twitter. It was like a hundred to like, I think $200 a month max. So I'm not making a lot of money off of Twitter. Uh, pocket chain, I think it's gonna go towards my like phone bill maybe, um, which I mean, you know, circular, circular there, circle of life, Twitter phone bill, Twitter phone bill, I think it works. But when, like, 
I I got that and I made an okay amount of money, but I could imagine if I was getting 15.7 million views on tweets right after Mass Tragedies, yeah, you might be able to make a pretty penny. Thankfully, though, a lot of these accounts are getting like context added, context added, context added. And when, it, and when posts get those, they can't make money. And so one of the big things I would advise you guys to do is put context added on those posts as much as you can. You drain these people of every dime, drain these people of every single dime. I want them to be unable to finance a cardboard box off of this tragedy. These guys are scum. They're not only trying to uh benefit off of this tragedy and profit off of it uh very disingenuously uh in a very irresponsible manner but they're also damaging the information space and making it worse for the rest of us especially those who live here and we're trying to find out oh my god what happened i know people in baltimore i was like did it was anybody on the bridge that i know i'm trying to find out who's on the bridge because it's as if it's like 200 300 people then there's a higher and higher chance that i have a friend family member somebody else on the bridge but what i'm trying to find that out i'm being told how the pilot of the boat probably got a moderna vaccine and that's why everyone died these people need to just be treated with the utmost disrespect. There's no other way to handle them. Treat them as if they were the crazy person on the side of the road with a sign saying the end is near, which they are the digital version of. They're j they just don't smell like feces, so you're not immediately repulsed by them. But they're the same type of person. The only difference is one makes a lot more money doing it and is a little bit more well-kept. A little bit more well-kept. Moving on from that, I want to talk about more mainstream responses to this that I found disgusting because right now I'm talking about alternative media and the problem misinformation online, but we had some problems with mainstream media too. For example, Fox News trying to suggest that migrants could have been partially at fault for what happened with the bridge. There is. Let me one second. Let me turn this up. Also, also uh, shout out for a good pol politic guy, Mac for highlighting this on Twitter. This was bizarre. I wouldn't have saw this if it wasn't for him. Also get your there is. Let me also get your take on what's going on in terms of world affairs. Uh, the White House has issued a statement on this saying that there's no indication of a nefarious intent in the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The ship involved in the collapse of the bridge is 948 feet long uh, called the Dolly, a Singaporean flagged container. But of course, you've been talking a lot about the potential for wrongdoing or potential for foul play given the wide open border. That is why you have been so adamant. Why has the Republicans had such a hard time securing this border? The president says he's not going to take his uh, executive action. You know that. Well, we all have to stand together. We all have to say that, that it takes 60 votes to pass anything in the Senate. And so Republicans have to stand together and say, look, we're not going to do anything else. This is just so gross. Completely unrelated. I don't even think the Fox News audience at home heard that and were like, oh, that makes I bet a bunch of them tilted their head a little bit. Look at the looked at the TV a little cockeyed to that. What? There's just no relation. She didn't even make the relation. She didn't even it's, she, it didn't even feel like she was making an attempt to make the relation. And almost she it's almost like she just said migrants. Bridge. She might as well have just said that because there was nothing to link these two things together. But still, the insinuation had to be made. And why did it have to be made? Because on the border, on immigration issues, that's a big kicker for Trump's 2024 run. That's a big motivation for its run. That's been a big motivation for Donald Trump since the start of his political career in 2016. So if you can make every issue about immigration, then it benefits him. Even if the issue is not about immigration and it helps undermine having a productive conversation to fix the issues that could have led to this, whether with the power outage, whether it has to do with uh, bumpers around the bridge, whether it's both of these things, who knows? We got to wait for the investigation. But that was not it. It was not just Fox News. Newsmax, and I, I, get, this is, I guess you could less blame Newsmax, but he can blame a combination of Newsmax and Nancy Mace, a Republican representative, a close Trump ally deeply embedded in the MAGA movement who went on Newsmax to blame the bridge collapse on Joe Biden and the infrastructure bill. Let's check this out. This is this is the direct, like some of them you could say the last one, it was an insinuation. 
She directly tries to tie these things together while the bodies aren't even cold yet. Here. Yeah, you'll hear that. I've been here. Yeah, you'll hear that. I'm sure you'll hear the Democrats have a press release and conference somewhere today or tomorrow about it. the need for a trillion dollar infrastructure program uh, after all the other ones. And that's my question to you. It seems like we, we do have these infrastructure bills, lots of money in it. I mean, I've been under bridges. They're horrible to look at. You look and you see rust. <laughs> if you drive over bridges, you see things you, you are like, am I going to make it over this? The bridges are definitely old. The roads are old. But why, after all these bills, after all the money, do we still have really old bridges and really old roads? Because we're not spending it on roads and bridges. Right. Look at the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill that was done a couple of years ago that the left hails as this massive success, but it was mostly Green New Deal. Actually, in that bill, $110 billion went to surface transportation, which is roads and bridges. And of that $110 billion, $70 billion went to public transportation. I do want to throw out there that Nancy Mace's district also took benefits from the legislation that she voted against, but like many other Republicans, tried to make sure that there were parts in the bill, uh, allocations for their district. So they got money for the district from the bill, but they voted against it. So they, of course, think it's good for their own district, just bad for everything else. And leaving only 40 billion for traditional roads and bridges, what you and I think about. And if you live along the coast or you live near water, you know that our bridges are rusting out. You know that we have many, many bridges that have to be replaced and upgraded. And you know it's probably about a billion dollars a bridge every time. And so I look at South Carolina when the infrastructure bill came through, we really only got $1 billion more than we otherwise would have over a five-year period. I can barely build a bridge in my district for a billion dollars. That's just one district. So um, we have to be smarter. You look at the spending bill we did on Friday, all the waste that's in there, um, things that we should, the government should not be paying for when it could be going to things that are the government's purpose, like just like this. Man, if we had only spent all the money on all the bridges and all the roads, then this 985 foot shipping vessel, 150 feet wide, wouldn't have crashed into it. If we had invested into the infrastructure, then an Indian crew, sometimes, no matter how hard you try to control for things, disasters happen and then you do your best to control to make those outcomes less likely. We could have added the fenders, good chances still would have happened. You could have added more construction crews on the bridge to repair them. There's a good chance that something like this could have still happened. Hell, you could have maybe even replaced the bridge top to bottom. Something like this could have still happened, because name me a bridge this could have happened in, and we know for sure, nah, it won't collapse. It'll be fine, 985 foot shipping vessel. What is this? Uh, the Biden administration wanted the infrastructure bill to me larger. The infrastructure bill had to be dragged in in order to make it bipartisan to pass it. So if the problem is, why are we spending all this money on these new programs when we should have been spending more money on roads, bridges, and infrastructure, then why did you guys ask for it to be reeled in? And then when you asked for it to be reeled in, why did many of you, Nancy Mace included, vote against the legislation to then ship stuff to the district that they asked for? Come on. This is just so partisan. It's just, it's just complete partisan hackery. And it got a little grosser from here. Last representative I'm going to be talking about of the night, Representative Mike Collins from the state of Georgia, who tweeted out today less than 24 hours after the bridge. And while six people are still missing, some of them, I mean, many of them probably dead. There's a good chance. Baltimore obviously won't rename the, the new bridge after Francis Scott Key again. So, any guesses on the new bridge name? Here, I shit you not, are the top three replies to the sitting congressman. George Floyd Fentanyl Memorial Bridge. The second is the George Floyd Memorial Bridge, so... No right wing humor as diverse and and wide spanning and creative as always. And third, the Pete Booty Bridge built to sustain heavy loads. Six people are still missing. This is a sitting congressperson. This is a sitting congressperson, and he thought this was the best. Th th there's a good chance we're gonna find the bloated. 
bodies of these people like a week from now for all we know after he made this comment already it hasn't even been 24 hours imagine fuck, 24 hours after 9 11 the sitting congressman comes out oh pff, tower in new york came down huh what are they gonna name it up name the new two towers they replace it with the tall lesbians like what whatever don't pretend like the last one wasn't funny i'm sorry i don't find it funny i like it like it's silly it's ha ha it's whatever but why did a sitting representative feel necessary to do this i expect this type of nonsense from just like the internet it's the internet it's whatever but he's a sitting representative like people are gonna just people will be dead Just not being taken seriously, either when it comes to the facts, uh, who's responsible, what caused it, who's to blame, and when it comes to just how the situation is being generally treated. It's really sad. Uh, thankfully, though, it seems that the federal government is going to be getting involved to deal with it. Uh, so hopefully all of this will just stay words, nonsense, and uh, internet chatter, and the response will be fast, effective, and a bridge, a new one, will be built as soon as possible, and the six missing people will be found shortly uh, or soon, as soon as possible. Yeah.